a black diagram of a home heating system. Just as a reference, I'm going to open up my document properties and change my display units to inches. I'm going to go landscape and US letter. I'm going to set up a new rectangular grid, go to inches, and then I'm going to make grid lines every quarter inch and then a major grid line every four. So I create an inch. And I'm going to snap every object and snap to grids just to make it easy. All right, now that our document is set up, we're going to go to objects and open up the symbols. And under symbol set, click flowchart shapes. We're going to click the flowchart pieces that we have in the existing diagram or that you need. And some of them I'm going to end up copying. And you can generally lay them out, whatever order, but now we're going to select our height and width depending on our document size. And I am going to make my rectangle about one by two. My square is a little larger. I'm going to constrain the aspect ratio. That allows me to center the two objects. I copy and paste. And then I'm going to make my bottom rectangle a little bit larger in the length or width direction and keep the height the same. Okay, uh, again, I'm not finalizing my layout, but just organizing my shapes as best as I can. Okay, now I'm gonna make sure that all my symbols meet the needs or match the diagram that I'm following. So I have a plus and minus set point, and I'm just gonna adjust this particular symbol to fit and lock into the middle of my set point. I'm going to copy and paste these guys so that I can add a minus symbol in the same spot. And again, just align that to make sure that it looks nice and even. Okay. And the set point is now complete, so I'm going to highlight all three of those objects and press Control G or Object Group. So now that's one symbol. Okay, my first box is the thermostat controller. So I'm going to add some text and I'm going to double check my spacing. I just want to do a uh, single space and I'll change that in a second. I accidentally switched tools. So that's going to be the thermostat controller. Of course, at the top, you can change your fonts, sizes, and things like that. And make sure you have single spacing or whatever spacing you would like. And I'm just generally going to center my object. I'm going to highlight all of the text by pressing Control A and then center it. And now I'm going to copy and paste a bunch of these since I like the size and style of my font. And I'm going to enter all of the values for my symbols, and I'm just using this home heating loop as a uh, reference. Now that I have all of my text and my symbols written out, I'm going to copy and paste any external text I need just to match the style and font.
and I'm going to go through and change all of these. Now that I have typed in all of my correct labels, I can just roughly adjust them and make sure everything is spelled correctly. Now, by pressing the O key, I will get my connector tool. And now you can see that every object has a center node and I can connect each of the objects together. And that'll actually link them up. So if I move any of the symbols, the lines will follow. And I'll just show you an example. There you go. So now all of the lines follow that particular symbol. If I want to group my text and align it with my object, I actually need to do that before I put in all of my connections. But I'll show you what happens when you don't. You start losing your connections to some of your pieces. And you can see it did snap back to one of them, but one of them did not. So sometimes it's a little finicky. So I'm just going to delete all of my connections. And now I'm going to align all of my texts center. And then control G to group each of my texts to the symbol. And you can see they become one piece. To select multiple, just press shift and click your symbol on your text, center them, and I'll show you just object group or control G works. So now the symbols have text attached to them and they're centered. Now I'm going to use my connection tool and I'll zoom in a little bit to make it easier to see. I'm actually going to make sure that everything has a pair axle connection. See how that bent so now that they'll align a little bit nicer, so I don't have angled connections. Everything is at a 90 degree. And since I chose simple measurements and a simple grid, it will make it really easy to center and align all of my pieces and make sure that all of the lines follow. So now I can just find the centers using the grid of each of the pieces. So you can see how the pieces move and the connections move in relation to the symbols. And the same thing, I can choose my base point for my circular object and then center that. And I'm going to turn that off. And make sure that I center all my objects and then I'm going to align my connections to make sure that the lines, the paths themselves are oriented properly. And this is a little tricky to balance out. Now that I'm happy with my arrangement, I'm going to raise my symbols. And you can do that in the object tab, or you can just press page up. That's a little faster. You got to press it twice since each line is an individual path. And there we go. Now we have a pretty organized flow chart. And the last thing we're going to do is add any external uh, symbols or paths like the disturbances. So I actually can't, if I press zero, uh, oh, I can't add a connection to a text. So 
So I'm going to draw one myself. So I chose pair axle to match my flow chart. Press enter to finish off your path. And then if you go to stroke style under the fill and stroke, you can add an arrow at the end of your path by looking at the markers. And then I can change my width if I need to. I'm going to keep it the same for now. Again, the same thing goes true for these dashed arrows. I'm going to use the B spline tool in the Bezier curves, and I'm just going to draw a simple quarter inch wide arrow to make it easy to snap all my objects. And then I'm going to choose a dashed line. And at the end, I'm going to choose an arrow marker. And then quickly, I get a really nice arrow. I'm going to click that and then copy and paste that three more times. I have one more that's actually pointed in a different direction. So if I paste this and try to rotate it, it doesn't exactly go in the orientation that I prefer. And same thing, if I end up flipping it, across an axis, it doesn't do exactly what I want it to do. So since I made it a really simple thing, and oh, and I can pull up the transform tab just to show you that you can do the same things, rotate, skew here. So what I'm going to do now is actually redraw that. And since I made it a really simple drawing and I remember what markers and dashes I used, I'm going to do the same thing and just use my B-spline path tool and make sure that your end of the line is where you finished, not where you want the arrow to go. So if I make it on the left side, this is actually going to go on the right because that was where I started my path. So just be careful where you orient your um, your paths. So there we go. Same style arrow, just in the other direction. And now I can align all my text to make sure that it looks good. Again, I've selected a simple arrow designed so that I can match it across the board and they're all lined up. I'm missing one item and it's actually just an arrow coming out. So I'm just going to add an arrow marker at the end and that will be where my house temperature will point to. And make sure you arrange anything however you'd like. Try to center my text as best as possible without being too close to the boxes. And we'll say that's pretty good for now. You can arrange things with different arrows, markers. You can change the colors of your symbols and the thicknesses of your lines using the fill and stroke tab. I'm going to delete my reference and I'm going to finish my drawing. I'm going to save this as an Inkscape. SVG so I can edit it later if I need to. And then if I need a professional document, I can export it as a PNG image or I can save it as a variety of formats. And uh, I'm just going to do a PDF if I want to have that as a single document. And you can change a couple of the functions. For now, I'm just going to leave everything default. And then uh, I'm going to show you what the PDF looks like. And there you go. You have a pretty clean flow chart on a regular letter-sized piece of paper. So you can put that inside of your documentation.